Hey everyone, Adam Chernoff here for Covers.com with my Circa 5 for NFL Week Number 5. And we're going to have a lot of fives here in the next couple of minutes as they tend to be running wild. 5-0 and last week, 15-5 and on the season inside the top 100 within the contest. And we're starting Week 5 off with the San Francisco 49ers plus 5.5. Can you count the fives already in the first 25 seconds? of this video. Look, Trey Lance has played 19 snaps so far in the NFL. And he's looked pretty terrible in those 19, less of broken coverage where Debo Samuel was as wide open as you're ever going to see a receiver in the NFL. But I can't ignore how big this number is against a very overrated Arizona Cardinals team. Now, people are going to frown at that. I'm not saying the Arizona Cardinals are a bad football team by any stretch. What I am saying is through four weeks, we've seen them get a ton of attention, the last remaining undefeated team. And they're really getting away with two games in the middle there where they were down nine points to the Jags late in the third quarter and then trailing by two touchdowns against the Minnesota Vikings. We're sort of giving them a pass for that. Those were really bad games. This is not a 4-0 team that's anywhere close to being elite among the top teams in the NFL. Now they're laying five and a half points against the 49ers, who were two and a half point underdogs on the look ahead line. So the Jimmy Garoppolo injury occurs, and all of a sudden this line balloons all the way up to five and a half. I think it's gone way too far. And I think Kyle Shanahan, if he's as good of a play caller as we all think he is, with a week to prepare for Trey Lance within this system and the uncertainty that comes with it. This is an opportunity for San Francisco to move the ball enough against this Arizona Cardinals defense and stay within this number. I like San Francisco plus five and a half. I also really like the New York Jets plus three to kick things off early morning London game. This game's at 9.30 a.m. Eastern. Jets getting three points. The Falcons, their offenses look like one of the worst units in the league through four weeks. 27th in yards per play. Matt Ryan with one of the lowest intended air yards per pass of any quarterback in the NFL. This offense, very restricted. Now you take away the top two wide receivers, Calvin Ridley and Russell Gage. Unlike the Tennessee Titans, who had Derrick Henry in the backfield, the Falcons do not have a running game to make up for the fact that they're going to be without their top two wide receivers, as were the Titans last week against this very Jets defense. I think that spells trouble. And I also think this Falcons defense going to spell trouble as well. The Jets were very sort of influenced by their schedule of opposing defenses they faced to start the year, facing three of the most difficult challenges, weeks one, two, and three. We saw this offense come alive against Tennessee. That was a huge step back in class, facing the Titans 24th in defensive efficiency last week. This week with the Falcons, they're getting the 30th ranked defense in efficiency. You're putting this on a neutral field. I think this number is just a couple points too much. We should be seeing this one less than three. The market is already off the three and coming down. There was a lot of support from professionals for the Jets on Thursday. Happy to take the Jets here in the contest number that's locked in. I'll take them plus the three. The other three picks, which we'll start off with Minnesota at nine and a half. This number opened seven, got bet up, rightfully so. You look at the Detroit Lions and some of the issues they have within their secondary starting numerous rookies. Last week, they lose their best pass rusher and now potentially without two of their five offensive linemen, two key losses up front. And Hawkinson, the main wide receiver for Jared Goff, not healthy. They go on the road to Minnesota, one of the biggest home field advantages in the NFL. And there's not a lot of them. Minnesota certainly has one. And it's Goff under pressure with injuries out wide. And this is a horrible Lions secondary trying to match up with the Vikings and that wide receiver talent they have. This is a huge step back in class for Minnesota of opposing defense, of opposing pass rush from last week to this week. Much better offensive matchup, and we're going to see this Vikings offense do whatever they want for four quarters. So as big as this number may look, I still think it's plenty short. So I'll take Minnesota minus 9.5 as my third pick. And we'll go all the way to the opposite side of the spectrum for this one. Houston, plus eight and a half. Potentially a play that not many people are going to be on. Maybe New England gets the bulk of the picks on this game. 
I don't think the Patriots deserve to be laying more than a touchdown against any team in the NFL just because of how weak their offenses look. And people may disagree with that because Sunday Night Football, all we could hear from Chris Collinsworth for four quarters was the coming of age for Mac Jones and the passing of the torch and how great his quick release is. Well, guess what? It's been like that for four games this season, and the Pats haven't scored more than 20 points unless it was against the Jets, who, as we just mentioned, have plenty of defensive issues of their own. When I look at this Patriots offense, I don't see a coming of age. I don't see a, a massive change. I see an offense that's very, very restricted in what they do. And now they're going on the road, and it's a very different price tag from what we saw them at home as nearly a touchdown underdog. Now they're laying more than a touchdown on the road. I think it's gone much too far here. I get it. It's Davis Mills. It's a young quarterback against Belichick. Recipe for disaster. But I'm happy to potentially swerve here. Take the big number against an offense that just doesn't score a lot of points. I'll put Houston plus eight and a half as my fourth pick. And then my last one, Baltimore minus seven at home against the Indianapolis Colts. And this was a tough one because this card for me, by far my least favorite overall of the season. But I am going to Baltimore. My ratings make this higher. That was sort of step number one. Step number two, looking at the Colts, I just see an offense that has a ton of issues as well, really restricted, dealing with injuries, both sides of the football, especially on the defensive side. Within that second level, Baltimore got past that opening three-week chunk of their schedule that was bracketed around Kansas City, and we really saw this passing game wake up against the Broncos when it was needed. And so the Colts, familiar with Baltimore, but I do think the loss of Gannon is going to prevent this defense from having that defensive coordinator making the best game plan possible. I think that's still getting overlooked to an extent in the early part of the season for the Colts and how they match up week to week. Ravens now fresh off of that schedule bump. Now we see the passing game. That starts to look very interesting within this matchup. And I think the how soft the Colts play is just not a good defensive look if you want to match up against this Ravens offensive front. I think this is a spot where at home on Monday Night Football, the Ravens put up a big number and Wentz and company just can't keep up as he's going to have to deal with a lot of pressure and a lot of blitzes in his face. So I'll lay the touchdown here with the Ravens at home. So those five picks, once again, for week five, the New York Jets plus three, San Francisco plus five and a half, the Vikings minus nine and a half, Houston plus eight and a half, and Baltimore on Monday night laying the touchdown. That'll do it for me. Enjoy week five, and I'll talk to you next week for week number six.